Hi everyone, Soul Super 17 here. Let me be first, like usual, I did not own the picture, I made the thumbnail, and a non pay video. Alright, so. I'm basically just gonna. I had like a lot more I wanted to do yesterday in the what if, but. That took longer than I suspected. So. Yeah. Um. I'm just trying to get basically probably up to season one ending, and then I'm going to basically do some other what-ifs, and then come back to this, along with probably my persona what-if. <sighs> I have a lot of what-ifs. <laughs> okay, anyways. So, let's just get this started. Last time, this probably may have seemed like a BS thing, but I mean, it's kind of like, it is possible that, you know, the whole entire other monsters are going to be coming in that ain't from this world, basically, and mo be modified to where it actually would work. I mean, if you really suspect, basically, the dungeon basically is alive and stuff, it does have its own consciousness. And Hades, you know, in this one's bored and wants entertainment, and basically wants me to suffer, why not make something that's going to make me suffer and kill me, like, 15 times in this? You know, in a series. But I'm going to die a lot more, actually. But, um, yeah. I didn't say I got any souls because of Biru. Even though I killed Biru, technically. Turned Biru, well, female Biru into a familiar. Well, familiar. Which I kind of thought would have been an interesting idea, to be honest. Like... It'll be interesting because of one, I basically, if I don't gain healing spells right away, I then basically can get, like, you know, someone else to heal me and such without having a party of people where, um, technically this familiar can't really die. Die. So, um, but yeah. Anyways, before we get started, I'm just gonna do some real quick things. Alright, so, yeah. Okay, so I just want to also point out that I got no souls from Biru, because it, Biru came back alive. But I did get it's basically drops, and kind of also due to the luck, I didn't just get like a monster core. So, yay. <laughs> Anyways. Let's just get things started, because I basically... Oh, man. I'm just I'm just gonna try to enjoy this week of not basically, you know, going working all night and then have to sleep basically probably all morning and a little bit of the afternoon. Uh, it, it, I think I think this job's gonna well this new job's gonna like be really hard on me. So but I'm gonna try do my best on keep on making videos and uploading them. It'll probably be like every morning, then if I can basically do that so yay anyways get back to it so I time we left off in part five I basically got my butt kicked a lot died basically got female beer as my basically companion of well, my familia well not familiar familiar I don't know why I said familia uh, and I've uh well basically got some you know, new materials I'm going to use. Got basically a new weapon. Kind of like BS reason why I got it. But I mean, to be fair, I have the basically parry system. I mean, I have like all, you know, I got the parry system from Bloodborne. I kind of needed a you know, firearm, so why not? And basically, it was just due to my luck, my luck status, which... Kind of also with probably my my actual even my, my even though my luck's fifteen my uh, natural good and bad luck situation kind of also would work in this case but yeah anyways you know that happened also kind of basically gonna be like hey you know I'm uh, I'm basically halfway dead while basically came back Biru technically killed some monsters which. I mean, I would have naturally been on the way back. I would have Biru kill some monsters. But the fact is, they were so... They wouldn't, like, level up Biru. She wouldn't have leveled up that far. But I would have gotten souls. 
So, from floor seven or floor like probably seven eight, slash eight, I probably would have gained probably like altogether. Probably would have gained from six upwards. Probably only like one. Yeah, probably like not one thousand, but like only two hundred and ninety, like two thousand nine hundred and eighty nine souls. Wait okay, a minute, I need to write that down. Okay, I just did some things, so yeah, I basically gave I basically have Vera's skill slash magic and stats, and she's level one. But I'm kind of thinking of making it a basically kind of like solo leveling sort of, but then mixed with the Manchi, but then I think the Manchi system, since she was created in the dungeon, is working better than basically just a solo leveling, but the fact that since she's a monster, it's a little bit different from basically normal humans. She's going to basically gain the experience of killing other monsters, but she's going to basically be changing the whole tire, like, she basically has to become level 2 from basically doing something that the gods would find amazing. No, that won't happen. She basically, but you were basically just like, she kills a monster basically that's stronger than her. It doesn't matter basically what her skills, I mean, what her skills are at, it just matters like, it basically, she kills basically the strongest being, and she gets, you know, better. That That's what I mean. It's kind of exactly the same thing, but it doesn't basically, it can be like, she can kill a boss at level 1, you know, basically, or probably like a minotaur that's level 2, and she can become level 2 then. So the stronger basically the monsters is that she kills, the, she'll become stronger. And, but she will gain experience on her own, that it will basically, her stats will keep going up on their own. And basically, since what we know is Biru and, you know, and basically, so leveling, and basically, in this, I kind of made fast. So, yeah. Anyways, enough of that. So, yeah, I kind of basically was near dead because of her. Her stats basically were set to level 1. St still probably, like, S ranks and everything. Got me some souls, and, yep. Now, uh, I basically were met up with Bell, Eyes, and basically Hestia, and I was basically nearly dead. I didn't realize all this because I, I couldn't do anything yesterday because I just wasn't need to do something yesterday, so I kind of forgot I need to write this all down until now, and I apologize. Anyways, like I said, this thing started, because I got crap I need to do again, like work. So, yay. <sighs> Time. It's a pain in the ass. Alright, <clears throat> so, we're going on basically to Hades, who watched the whole entire event, and, well, this is before I passed out. So, you know, it's me while I'm walking back up to the dungeon. I mean, back through the dungeon upwards as Hades is just <laughs> laughing about it. Basically, he's like, I can't believe it. He actually... <laughs> he actually survived. I thought he was going to die 50 times. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's... He really had some dumb luck on that one. Creating two skills while basically dying. Over and over again. Uh, <laughs> uh, simply amazing. As all of a sudden basically a message appeared from the dungeon. Be like, what shall we do now? He basically has a monster as a... Um, as basically Hades would say, a familiar. Basically it's... Well, since we base basically the monster off basically the... Well, so a leveling story, basically make it powerful enough to be, it was like first introduced, to be quite honest, I'm actually very surprised that Adventurer basically made a ring to capture basically said monster. But the fact is, all that magic power that was stored in the ring was very impressive. They must have been a higher ranked adventurer before they died and gave it to someone else since there was two different types of magic sources into the, basically the ring. But to be frank, him basically getting the ring was, well, just dumb luck, actually. Hmm. I never expected this. But, it does not matter. I think he's gonna keep basically his little monster friend basically a secret. Though, 
since you are the one, basically, that created it through my, basically, well, images as shown, I think you should be the one to basically decide if in the dungeon she'll be gaining skills or not. Which, basically, the message would be saying from the dungeon, agreed. But I do not like the fact that basically a monster is basically working with a human. Which, though, basically, Hades goes, oh yes, a human who basically has to pass a normal leveling limit. That basically only one person could. Since he's died 15 times and he was so determined to win, and basically make sure basically Biru fell. I think he has jumped quite high from the skills, well, level he was at. Though, so, <laughs> uh, we're going to have to make lesser versions of Biru. Make them a little bit way weaker and less, basically, well, less stronger than basically what the normal ventures can have, unfortunately. <sighs> Created to exact copy of Biru, from basically what I know from what... I seen from that world it was a bad idea. Even I can admit, no one will be able to surpass basically on the lower, well, on the higher floors. Which so basically the dungeon saying so we should make the ants basically be able, a little bit more weaker. Well, I mean a little bit more stronger than what they are now, but make them basically weaker than Biru. Which basically Hades would not. He goes like, and I have a perfect basically well, new look for them. We can call this a variant of them. Which, basically, the dungeon will be like, I'm again a little bit more interested to see what type of monsters you can come up with just from this other world. Let us see. As such, Hades creates the monster. Meanwhile, basically, while that was going on, I was basically going up through the dungeon, but now we're basically going to the scene when I fell. Basically, as... Well... As basically, as soon as basically we, you know, when I'm falling... Someone would catch me, but you're probably wondering. Because I'm about to say who it is. They're probably like, wait, if she was watching, then how did she get here? Well, basically, I honestly just know Freya has some way of basically getting around, like, really quickly. Like, how she basically could be in one area, basically, of, well, like, she's basically watching from the tower, and then all of a sudden... She can turn into like a human form, a uh, human form and such, and basically be seal. So I'm kind of thinking she can basically teleport around, but um, but I kind of thought it, it, this would be kind of a little bit of a good thing, but nah. I mean, I was gonna say it would be Freya, but nah. It just basically eyes catches me. So yeah, eyes catches me basically and. Well, she basically is a shot because of... She's basically seeing Barrel look. My, uh... My basically, chest plate armor is basically... Well, it was like it was cut through, basically, with pieces of my, my skin are showing. Basically, some are bleeding. Others look like just scars. Basically, my whole entire... You know, outfit, like I said, was basically almost destroyed. As Hestia basically... You know, coming over, basically, seeing... Well, me... He was like, Is he gonna be okay? You know, asking to eyes as eyes as I I don't know, but we need to get him somewhere basically in medical treatment, which basically Bell says the tavern's nearby. We basically need to ask them for a room and uh, as basically Hestia would say, basically get them. The I, I basically I remember there's the pharmacy god. I forgot his well, the guy that makes potions. So give me a minute. Let me um. Let me just make sure. I'm probably butchering this name, but basically I said, like, Bell, go find Mayach. I literally do not know how to say his name. It's like Mitch? My, oh, goddess. Some god. I mean, you know. Me, M-I-A-C-H, so it's like Mayach. It sounds like to me. And, you know, the way I basically you know, see it, I would say it. That's one of my problems I have with, I think, my dyslexia. And people have told me this when I was, you know, seeing, I mean, when they basically saw me do, you know, doing this. So, yes. So, anyways. As basically Bella would nod and, you know, you know, go find it. You know, find him as familia. So, basically, has to be like, eyes, do you know where basically 
they're said to have her name is with Mamma Mia, which she would heard about it from Belle and such, which she would nod and be like, and basically you know, say Loki likes to go there. So she goes, then please, let's, you know, hurry. And, you know, basically she would nod, pick me up and run. Basically, meanwhile, Freya, she basically was basically seeing, basically watching Belle fight and all, and she was very impressed by his growth. But then when she basically saw me, basically came in out of nowhere and used some, something she never saw before, but then all of a sudden just, you know, she didn't see me fully, basically, because she was curious about what I used and what was that beam that came out of some, you know, said object. She basically was saying, you know, now notice basically my whole entire, basically, attire and basically I was looking ragged, basically beaten, basically very, very much almost dead. And she couldn't believe it. She basically just was in pure shock that this even happened to me and I was just, like, still standing and she was like, no, it's, what? She's basically dumbfounded and... Basically, she saw the whole interactions, and then me falling over, eyes, you know, catching me, Belle running away, Hestia, and then eyes running. She basically stands up immediately, and, well, would basically turn to seal and go to the tavern. So, and all the things she can, you know, think in her head, goes, you know, just asking, what has happened to me, what, what was I doing, why was I looking like I was basically nearly dead, and something in, and this basically peak of worried has never basically really hit her like this. So, it's just kind of like new to, a new sensation of basically, basically she is having. So, yeah. So basically she will become seal and such and she'll be at the tavern by the time eyes and basically Hestia basically get there. So, Bell will find Miach, basically tell him the situation, basically ask if you have any potions you can spare, so we can basically try to heal me, which, or, well, if he basically knew anything that could basically help, basically for my wounds and such, which, technically, potions are, can be used for, like, medical, you know, I would think, but a doctor and such, which I think he kind of, since technically he has, a, like, a, you know, his store, and basically also makes potions. He would have, like, the reason why I think he will basically have, have, like, some medical knowledge and such. And then he'll basically bring one, um, someone from his, basically, familia, which I think is the one he would usually have with him around. I just don't know the name of the person, so... But right now, until I basically remember the name or I find out from the anime or manga, yeah. So basically he will bring that person with and such... And basically, you know, they have medical supplies, you know, with just, in, you know, to help. Since basically, yeah. So anyways, as while basically they're running, he'll ask basically what's my condition. He goes, so, he's, he's badly wounded. It's like, he was in a big fight and he just, I don't know how he can even keep standing. Which, basically, this basically part of Miyachi's familia which would be the woman that basically, you know, he walks around in the anime with. I even think he dances in, like, one of the seasons, maybe season two. Basically, like, how bad was it? He was, basically, it looks like his armor was broken, slashed, and there's basically wounds, basically, where it was on his side, basically a hole where I think his heart was, but uh, I think he dodged it or he just got hit by something. Mostly, basically, on his arms and legs. But I don't know how bad was it. Which, Miach and her would just look at each other, just nod, they can you know, running faster with Belle following. Belle's worried, saying, So, I don't know what happened to you, but please don't die. I know you. I know you basically you can't physically die, but I mean, don't die in front of anyone, basically, if you, you know. Because we don't want you basically to try to get taken away. Besides, I can't basically see that. So. Yeah, I'm kind of making. I mean, I'm, I mean that. Blah, blah. This may sound weird, but to be fair, Bell has never really seen me died, so he doesn't know or wants to know how I wish would you know come back. So, anyways, meanwhile, Eyes and Hestia they will basically arrive at the tavern as basically Eyes will yell out, "Mamma Mia, can we basically have a room?" Which she was like, "Huh, Eyes Wallin," 
and she just stops and many people just see basically someone because I think Hesse would put on my mask they see basically the person that they call you know they would her basically one of the uh, well dungeon guides basically Edna call me a hunter basically you know see me they see me badly wounded you know basically hurt they'd be like what the as basically Ryu would see this along with Sila and they said to other you know the two cat girls basically demi humans would see this and just be in shock as well we were saying you know upstairs basically take the room you know any one of the rooms that are open quickly which they would nod and basically run up basically Ryu was just in, you know looking basically while they're running and along with Seal basically as everyone's basically just saying quiet and one of the guys everyone can hear saying how how do you think he's do you think he's alive? Which basically, I don't know what says, I, I don't know. I mean, no one's ever been, I mean, that badly wounded, right? Do you think it was, he came from the dungeon? <sighs> just basically, just as someone says, and we'll find out if he's alive. We'll see him around, so let's not basically ruin the mood. And let's enjoy our meal, everyone. Just some random guy trying to, like, you know, say, have hope. Which everyone's just nodding and such, which... Basically, Ryu kind of, you know, trying to go back to work, but looking up the stairs and such, as in Bell and, you know, the god, Mia, basically god, Mia, and his, his familiar member will come running in, as mom and Mia would see Bell saying upstairs, when she went on, they would just go up. Yeah, meanwhile, though, with me, I'm just basically kind of opening my eyes and... I'm just basically back in the room of, well, back in the area where I am. Basically see Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, Bloodborne, Sekiro. You know, the rooms where I talk about, like, you know, Code Vein, Lies of P, and Elden Ring. All that would be there as, I'm like, huh? <laughs> back here again. I wonder why this place is even here. Seems really weird. But how did I get here? And so beforehand, let me just make sure I can say his name right. Okay, and I'm going to try to give my best impression and try to, you know, phrase everything like this character would say. So, yes, I'm going to be speaking from, well, Elden Ring. So, yeah, as I would hear someone goes, well, something like this, I would, thought, I would think. Thy tarnish, it seems that you have arrived in this void of a place. Which, I would just turn towards basically the voice I would remember, and I'm like, wait, as someone would come out of Elden Rain, with an axe basically in his hand walking towards me, as I'm like, no way, G Godfrey? And he goes, hm. Tarnish, are you really that scared of me so far? I've not even attacked you yet. And I'm like, uh, no, I'm just shocked. How are you, how are you even here? He was, which basically Godfrey would say this, this void where these worlds connect. Uh, the one basically that, well, you could say a god basically told me of this. As I would think about it and I'm, Ah, I knew I should have looked up this name. Give me a minute. Basically, as I was saying, before you can say anything more, I've been like, wait, the Elden Beast told you? He goes, but then he'll look at me and just nod. He goes, this basically place is where thy tarnish and, well, anyone from our home could talk to. Well, you, at least. That is all I could, well, very much say. A warrior such as yourself, basically, in an unknown world to even I, is very unique. Which, I'm like, uh, this, this can't be even possible. Wait, does that mean I could, as basically, Godfrey would not know. Basically, he would say, this is an area where only we can talk and communicate, not fight, even though... It may be amusing to me. Which, 
basically I'm like, uh, <laughs> wait, why are you, he goes, I do not know why I'm able to talk in my, well, normal way, and then suddenly I change. So, I mean, basically he goes, but either way, tarnish. This also will be a, well, this also, this abyss, will be allowed us Besides community, to also be given certain things. Thy god, who basically, or, well, goddess, that summons you into a, this new dimension that you are in. He did not know the extent, not he, I mean, they did not know the extent of what they were doing. This had ramifications from taking you away from. As then he looks at basically the other gates, goes like, thy worlds. Which I'm like, uh... <laughs> about that, I'm from a different world, and I've been given the powers of all of this. The ability to keep dying and coming back, along with the systems that you gained. He goes, I do not understand what this system is, but that, I did not know. But still, you are tarnished. That is all. Which, based on like, okay... I want to commend you on facing a foe very great and but challenging for you to not give up. You have survived. Quite impressive. Which I'm like, uh, thanks. And then basically he will, and then he will just basically hit basically the flat part of the, well, I mean, basically the handle, the long handle, basically the bar. I mean, on the ground, he was like, Now, Tarnish, I have come here to give you something. It was from the Elden Beast. I was summoned to its, well, realm, and basically was told to give you something of equal challenge that you have done. Which, I'm just blinking, and you're like, Wait, 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 something equal to the challenge I've done? Which he does not. He goes, This will only be rare and few. We cannot basically interfere much in this world that you are in. Only certain people may come through. Ones, basically, that will basically see fit to give you an item. Or to give you advice. Which, I'm like... Uh, <laughs> that's... Wow. I mean, but then I kind of remember, basically, the queen from Code Vein came in and... Basically, that makes sense. That really does make sense. Which, basically... Godfrey basically would have something at his side, a pouch, and basically hand it to me. Which basically I would like, uh, thanks. And then I'm like, wait, could I open it or something happens? He goes, thou shalt, thou can open it. And they shall, well, and they shall basically understand. As basically when I open it, it's not ashes of war, if you would think. <laughs> no, it's fragments. With basically, I'm like, wait, they're red and... So the blade looks very worn down and chipped a lot. Wait, is this? Yes. That is the blade known as the Rivers of Blood. That blade basically was, well, was defeated by you, Tarnish. Well, at least the one that wielded it. But for some reason, I, well, the Elden Beast brought the sword and it shattered to many pieces. It said you will know what you can do with it. Which, my eyes widen, I'm like, you, you have to be kidding me. Which, basically he goes, no, now then, tarnish. You must wake up and basically keep on your journey. Do not fail in anything. Do not give up. That is the tarnish that you are. Basically, as Godfrey basically turns around and walks away, and I'm like, will I ever technically see you again? He goes, well, I do not know. But you basically shall, well, continue on. I'll try to see if I can watch you from basically the world of Elden Rain. As basically he walks through basically the, well, portal, well, technically gateway, which I'm like, so while I'm holding the basically, you know, the bag full of basically pieces of the Rivers of Blood sword. I'm like, I like to call it Rivers of Blood. I'm 
probably going to get some, you know, meat comments names. That's not what the sword's name is, so I'm going to double check. Okay, I was right. So, yeah, as basically it starts glowing, and basically all of a sudden it, I basically get a pop-up screen saying, Rivers, Rivers of Bullet Pieces has been added, added to the armory, which I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's kind of... And then all of a sudden, there's like a little, basically like, kind of like an earthquake, but like a, something's coming out of the ground, which I'm like, wait, what the? As all of a sudden, basically, when I basically look to where I basically would, you know, hear there's something coming from the ground, in the void, a portal opens, when well, a portal, a, gate, a new gateway is there as, basically, it shows a view of basically what I remember as the Nexus, which I'm like, Demon Souls? Wait, I knew about Demon Souls. Wait, there's also Nero. Well, Neo, I mean. And other Souls games, but as well. Basically, I don't have any more to say as all of a sudden, I basically feel like I get pushed out of wherever I was as I am slowly waking up. As I'm just Basically waking up, and I'm like, uh, what the, uh, God, why does everything hurt? Which, basically, I would only hear someone saying like, huh, oh wow, you're actually awake. Which, I'm basically blinking, trying to basically get whatever light that's in my, well, try to basically get used to light in the room, which I'm like, huh, but Bell? She goes, yeah, you're actually awake. <sighs> I'm glad you're alright, man. Which I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Basically, I'm slowly getting up and like, ow, ow, as Belle basically helps me up. I'm like, thanks. Which goes, no problem. But, um, you should know something. I'm like, yeah, what's that? Which basically he goes, well, Goddess Hestia was... Worry sick about you wouldn't leave the room. Seal and basically, well, Miss Seal and Miss Ryu basically came in after basically, well, you're being treated and helped as best they could. And Eyes, well, Miss Eyes basically stayed here too. Which I'm basically just blinking. I'm like, how bad? Which basically, Vale just says, we were told you were lucky to even be alive if you basically didn't basically hang on as much as you did, you would have died. Which, I'm like, uh, yeah, makes sense. Because I look over, I basically, to my left side, I would see Seal, Ryu, basically, Hestia. Because I don't see eyes, I'm like, where's eyes? Which, she basically goes, well, no, not she, but he goes, well, she had to go tell, basically, Loki what happened to you. It turns out Loki's been actually wondering about you, which I'm just like, that ain't good, <laughs> which basically Bell nods, so he just won't well, have a seat and goes like, but Soul, what happened to you, which I would just sign, basically would say this, something, something came here, it was created, I had to take care of it, since I, well, knew about it so well. Which, basically, Bell's like, was it from, which I would just nod, like, yeah, it was a story. You see, a character in it, basically, was born into this world because they were a monster. Which, Bell's eyes wide, and like, before you even ask why, basically, was a character a monster, or something like that. Remember, I think you're, there's stories in here where some, there's, like, some characters are monsters, too, right? You would kind of think about it and not be like, hey, sorry, he goes, don't. Don't bother us apologizing. Just know this. It was an ant monster. And it was a dangerous type of one. It's faster, stronger. It basically was a threat to, well, anyone. And it was just, I had to go down and defeat it. Kill it. I, I succeeded, but as you saw, I was gravely injured. Which Bell would ask, did anything else happen? Which I just look at him and I just sigh, but like, 
don't tell Hestia. Which he's like, what, what do you mean? He was like, promise me, Belle. I know you're a bad liar, but please, do not tell Hestia what happened to me in the dungeon. I trust you enough on this. Which, basically, Belle would not, but then, basically, he was saying, alright. Me forgetting about based on my skill, basically, Grave Walker. <laughs> I just sign and I'll say, 15 times. What? It took me 15 times on my 16th attempt just to defeat the, well, ant monster. Which, Bella's eyes wide and goes like, you've died, and I'm like, I just nod. Which, Bella's just in shock, but then he remembers, wait, what about your stats? Doesn't that mean basically, since you died, and I'm like, ugh, Hestia's gonna find out. I'm gonna basically be so gonna basically, you know, basically nag too. <laughs> Which basically Bell just blinks and then he would just nod, be like, yeah, at least it ain't me for once. Which I'm like, gee, thanks, man. It's like, no problem. I'm like, then we just have a little slight chuckle. In which basically has to hear us and wake up along with Face AC and Rui, which since basically, I mean, Ryu, not Rui, I mean, which basically Hester was the first one to wake up. She would see me laughing about. She goes, you know, basically goes like, "So you're you're okay?" And then she realizes I'm awake. She goes, and then you know she just jumps forward and basically hugs me and yelling at my name. Which basically I'm like, "Ow, ow, ow, Hester, I'm still hurting." She goes, she goes like, "Oh my, oh my," you know, basically she's like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." And then, then she goes, "Wait a minute, I'm mad at you for basically getting hurt so much." What was the big idea of basically coming basically looking like that? I'm like, uh. <laughs> which Seal basically and Ryu would basically agree with Hestia, which I would just sigh and basically just say, I knew a monster was in the dungeon. One that I, uh, knew. What, I kind of let it basically get, you know, keep on killing people, so I went into the dungeon and fought it. I killed it, and, well, <sighs> well, I won. Which basically has just eye, you know, blinking in her eyes wide, and she was like, "Wait, does that mean you?" Yep, I battled it to basically to that point. Seal so basically just look at me. He goes like, "How bad? I mean, how long were you fighting it?" Me saying, "Maybe a couple of hours, maybe fifty minutes, thirty. I honestly don't really know what how long I was fighting. All I knew is I went there and based on the afternoon, after. While I was eating. So then she basically, her eyes widened in the wall of She goes, wait, so that means you went straight to the dungeon? I'm like, no, I went to basically the Adventurer Guild and asked about it. Then I went to the dungeon. I went all the way down as fast as I could. When I got there, it, it already killed basically two more people. Which basically has to uh, bell... Seal and Ryu were basically just shocked by that, and I'm like, so? I fought basically the best way I could. I, uh, I think I got a new power, though, when I basically, well, not new power, base. I got a new, basically, skill, though. Probably a magic base once, and I was using magic. Came off it right on the fly. <laughs> Which, basically, I was like, wait, really? He was like, yeah, it was the only reason why I won, though. I just got lucky. <sighs> Which basically has to just like, all right, just <sighs> we're gonna have to basically get used to new armor. I'm like, which I basically was like, uh, yeah, I could probably ask Hephaestus to fix it up and such, but we probably need some materials. Then I remember basically my loot drop and such. I'm like, actually. Maybe that would do. She's like, huh? Which basically, Seal asked, what do you mean? He was like, uh, I got a loot drop from, uh, from basically killing the ant. It's actually going to become really good handy. Which Bell was like, wait, really? He was like, yeah, but for now, though, I need a heal. I'm just hoping Hephaestus doesn't real well, basically realize what happened to me. <laughs> How long was I out for, though? Which basically... Bell says, uh, two days? 
which has to do with Nod, which I'm basically just blinking, I'm like, wow, two days. Which basically, I just like a bell saying, you know, look at me like, so how's your training doing? He goes, uh, good. Apparently it was basically held back because of, well, Miss Eyes wanted to basically see how you're doing and such. Which I was just not basically, I'm like, oh wait, ugh. I'm going to have to basically have a debt to pay back. Which, basically, she go. I mean, what she was saying, well, Mitch, basically, well, Miach, you know, yeah. Basically, the god, basically, that helped Miach, basically, you know, says, you were just lucky to be alive and such, and, you know, be able to heal you, some potions helped, got you out of, basically, the danger zone, and, well, he says, say, basically, the you are going to have to pay him back on this one, and from last time, which I'm like, Oh, yeah, I've been so busy trying to get your debt down, I forgot about him. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to go to the lower floors then. Which, basically, as he was like, wait, you're thinking about going to the lower floors? I'm like, yeah. Which, basically, Ryo says, I don't think you're ready for that. Which, basically, I see a nod. I'm like, got no choice. Besides, I prefer to be solo, so I don't want to be any around anyone else. Which, basically, that would kind of basically give Ryu and Seal a little bit of a shock, but Hesse would just sigh to be like, First off, heal. Rest. I'm like, yeah, I will. Don't worry. So, she goes, alright, I'll go see if basically Mama Mia would not mind basically giving you a free meal. Which, I'll uh, just chuck I'm like, who knows? Maybe she will. So... Yeah, basically I'm looking at basically Seal and Ryu. I'm like, how long have you guys been here? Which Seal is saying, you know, two days. Ryu would just nod. Basically, I'm like, did you guys work? We were saying, yes, but we always, based on our breaks, we came basically to see if you were alright. Since Belle basically couldn't be around in the morning, or basically at the afternoon, and only could be around at night to make sure you're alright. Which I'm like, well, thanks for looking out for me, then, all of you. Which Bell says, but guys, Hestia was here the most. Which I'm just chuckling, like, of course she would. <sighs> Man, I feel like crap. Which basically Ryu says, you're just lucky to be alive. Which I'm just like thinking, <laughs> yeah, alive. Which basically Bell would kind of basically kind of, you know, saying poor choice of words in his head, but eh. So, anyways. So basically, Hesio would come down, I might come up with food, and, well, help, well, not help, yeah, probably help me eat it, since it would be hard for me to even move, basically, from my arm. At least one of them. Because I probably got, you know, got very bad, basically, wound on my arm. So, after Seal and, basically, Ryu left, Hestia, while basically feeding me the food, basically ask, you know, you have a lot of scars on you now because of, basically, this. I'm like, you know, while I'm eating and finishing the food, I'm like, yeah, I know. In which, we see she just then adds in, you're not telling me something, but I'll figure it out. I'm like, yeah, you'll figure out a very simple way. Ugh. Just don't, promise me you won't lash out at me. She goes, huh? He goes, remember, me dying and basically my skill? She would not be like, and then her eyes widened, and like kind of a little bit worried. Look, she goes, "How many times?" I just say fifteen. Got lucky on the sixteenth one. She would just look at me, and then she, I would say she's about to say something, and just sigh, be like, "How do you feel?" <laughs> Trivially, like crap. She was mentally. I was just thinking about. It. I'm like, I'm. I think I'm okay. I think me increasing my mind and basically fortitude and maybe willpower alone basically is keeping my mind in check. So. And so I basically think I'm pretty good. She would not be like, just never be that reckless, okay? I just saw it like I probably am though. She would basically just blank and basically just have a deep sigh again. She goes, 
Yeah, I'm gonna be worried about you from now on. Which I'm just chuckling, I'm like, figures. So, anyways, basically, though, after probably, I would say, after I, um, you know, finished the food, basically, Hestia would basically, you know, say she has to go to work and such. Since I'm up, she's not worried about me no more. And I'm like, yep. Which I'm basically thinking, wait, does she still work at the Hestia, basically, shop? Me, he's like, oh, no. Yeah, let's just say this. When Hephaestus found out what happened to me, I was still at the tavern. I was actually, basically, good enough to walk, and I was just leaving. And uh, when she found me, she dragged me all the way back to her familia, and uh, gave me a, well, a mean talking to. And basically, she asked to see about the armor and such. Which, totally my hat was a little bit, you know, get cuts in it, so give it more, basically, that look. But she, once she saw the armor she made for me, she goes, she, uh, What the? What did this? I'm like, a big giant ant that basically, that had its exoskeleton strong enough to cut through steel. It was level 15. She's like, blinking, she goes, uh, uh, it's just, I'm like, yeah, hey, um, question, though. Can you use this? Basically, I just pull out a piece of chitin. Basically, she's like, what? what's this? I'm like, it's chitin. It's from basically the ant's ectoskeleton. You can say the body armor around its body. She just, like, really look at it and basically, you know, taking a blade, she basically wants to see how strong it truly is. She tries to hit the blade, basically, just like, you know, probably a just random dagger, just, you know, to see how, I mean, to see how something strong it is, too. And when she basically hits it on it, on the chitin, is it at the skeleton? It breaks. The sword, I mean, the, the dagger just breaks. She's like, uh, yeah, can you basically infuse it into the armor that you made, plus basically my jacket? She goes, uh, uh you. Oh, and the pants. She's like, do you, do you even have enough of this? This ain't enough. I'm like, you can just basically put it into a powder and basically infuse it into it, right? She goes, well, yes. It's going to take me time to reforge it and everything. Basically, for basically the jacket and the pants, I don't really think I could do that. Which I'm like, oh, that kind of sucks. She was, yeah, I can infuse it into basically clothing, just armor. Which I'm like, guess I'm going to have to go to a tailor to see if they can do it with magic. Which she was signed, it says, yeah, you will. But you need to basically into a powder form, though. I'm like, true. So, I gave her Dartorius armor, and basically... And then she'll grind up basically probably like three pieces of chitin. And she says, I'll get to work on it soon. Oh, by the way, here's your sword. Basically, she throws it to me, basically, and I catch it. And when I take it out, I'm like, huh. Nice. Worked really well. Just, Yeah. Is there anything else? Like, oh. Yeah, so I basically go into the, my, well, armory. Take out the pieces of, basically, the sword. A river's of blood. She's like, uh, what are these pieces? They're like, oh, just showing me what's basically my next project. I'm gonna try to infuse it with, basically, the katana, basically, I have. Those are pieces of a blade called the Riz River of Blood. Basically, it's kind of like an art. How should I say it? It's kind of like, basically, blood magic. But every time you attack, it basically will cause the opponent to bleed. So it basically allow you to basically kill something quicker. She's like, uh, uh, that, that's just insane. Like, yeah, it gets really broken. So she's like, just, okay, what am I going to do with you? I'm just struggling, like, I don't know if I have to rest for a couple of days. So, yeah. In a sense, she would nod in. Well, I basically take out the pieces, put it back in my armory, and just go. For the next few days, I don't really do anything besides go back to Festus. You know, basically work on it. Work on basically making my... Infusing the pieces of the rivers of blood with the katana I have. And then, uh, well... I basically also then... Would go probably to the tavern, you know, talking to basically Seal and basically Ryu and the other two, basically 
well, the two cat girls and Mama Mia, but before all that happened, after basically I, you know, left the tavern that same day, basically that night, I want to say, well, Freya was basically reading the paper since she was at the tavern for two days. She basically even, you know, basically found Otar and basically asked if he basically saw me in the dungeon, which he says yes. And he'll explain what happened and what I did. Which, she'll be basically impressed, shocked, and a little bit, well, scared. Basically, I was, well, doing all that. But he basically, Oto would say about his theory about me basically dying multiple times. In which, basically, well, Freya would say, yeah, it's not a theory, he could die multiple times if I... As I basically said previously, which Otar would probably think him, says my apologies for forgetting then. She would just say it's no problem, but as then when she basically read the written report, or the written report from basically one of the stealth people that watched me that day, she basically couldn't believe on how quickly I died and how quickly I kept on dying, but then I kept on improving. And basically Otar did say his opinion saying, this hunter... He seemed to basically improve in mid-battle. He didn't really care at that moment, and he had this look of basically like a flame was in his eyes. You know, basically, they were glowing red. He just did not care what the basically monster was doing. He basically did not hesitate, did not waver. He moved forward no matter what. As basically Freya, you know, keep on reading as such on basically every basic action I took and basically my, you know, me dying, it just... Your hands starting to be a little shake, and then basically to when I was the final victor, you know, of this, she basically also heard what I was it somehow did, in which she just dropped the papers and such, and Otar would be like Lady Freya, but she basically would sit down in her chair, in the chair, and just like you know, see her hands shaking. She was like, H- "How? D- just how?" What she goes, uh, "Excuse me." She was, "How could?" I don't stand, understand how could someone keep dying, coming back, instead of running. The, he knew he was outmatched. Which, basically, Otaro goes like, oh, you basically read the report when he found out on what the monster was, level was. Which she would not be like, level 15 monster versus a level 1? That, that couldn't have been possible. He should have died way more. As basically Otar would just say, dumb luck. Which, she would just, kind of like, just, I, I can't believe it. So, Otar would just nod, and then basically she would just tell him to leave. She just needs a few minutes to herself. Which he wouldn't understand, but, you know, does so. As, after he leaves, I could just see basically Freya, basically, seeing basically my soul have been the same and such, but it's like, she doesn't understand why it, there should have been like some cracks in it for dying that much, but she does know basically like, there's some tears coming down her face. She goes, "I'm crying. Why am I crying?" She, you know, basically this is unknown to her. I know she basically she has other emotions and stuff, but for me it's like you know, she's just watching me. She has no sense of emotions like besides basically I'm a, basically a person of now interest in her and nothing more. But she doesn't basically understand why she's crying now. So yeah, but anyways. So basically while basically for my two days of sleeping, then basically my resting period, basically people have seen different a different monster appearing on the seventh and eighth floor and well, it's basically a, it's like Biru but different. And I heard about basically adventurer basically took on basically the ant monster Basically, and it was this, well, guy called, well, it was the hunter guy. Which, basically, Edna could not believe it. So, she basically would just find me walking around, basically, order on. And, basically, I'm just, like, acting like, you know, like, well, basically, I'm just, well, not acting, I mean, I'm just looking around, thinking. Basically, like, maybe I should get some different armors. <sighs> I mean, I should really start creating some, so I'm gonna need. I'd rather basically basically get the materials from the dungeon, because that would be better armor pieces. But Festus did say she would. 
I'll basically fix my base Atorius armor. Plus, I did find someone to basically well, fix base on my jacket and pants. Ugh. I only have a few pieces of chitin left. I even basically showed my weapon, well, my new weapon to Ephesus, which she did say basically it was made of the same material, but it was a little bit, it was basically a lot stronger than it should have been. Because she never saw this type of weapon, though she wasn't too sure, which is actually kind of impressive. I guess it was basically Biru basically having that weapon inside of her basically arm. But the smaller scale of it? Hmm. Well, I got a few pieces of chitin left. Maybe I should basically try to incorporate it into a, well, make a weapon out of it, infuse it with. Plus, I have that monster, well, that magic core. But, maybe I should basically use it basically for a crafting material. Ugh. Man, there's way too much basically to think about. As I would hear Edna basically saying, you know, just saying soul, which I would just turn around, I would see her, I'm like, oh, hi Edna. She would basically look at me with a little bit of basically of a glare, which I'm like, uh. You, you found out, didn't you? She goes, yes. So that's what you went basically in such a rush. Like, uh, I'm just looking around like, not here, please. She just basically kind of glaring, but then she, you know, does look around. And she would kind of just sigh, but like, where are you going? Well, you know, she asked me, where am I going? I'm like, I'm going back to my familia. I'm good enough rested and sides. I need to get my status updated. Ugh, it's going to be a pain. She was just nodding, basically, like, alright, so, basically, along the way, she goes, so what happened to you? I'm like, you don't want to know. She goes, yes, I do. I'm like, well, went down, basically, basically, level 15 monster, and basically, you know, because we're basically near the Hesse Familia, so there's not many people around. But she's like, wait, a level 15 monster? That's what's, what's the level? Which I'm like, yep. Uh, not many people will be able to even kill it. Which, you just can't believe that. It goes like, wait, why level 15? That should have been on the lower floors. The dungeon made it. I guess it wanted to basically test to see something. Just test what? Which, me just saying a whisper, you know, basically when I try to make it to be myself. And then I would just say to myself, well, I'm, no one and them probably heard me. And so I'm like, to test me for some weird reason. By this unknown god or goddess. Which she just basically thinks to herself. Unknown god or goddess and testing. So basically you arrive based at the Hestia Familia. Basically though. I. You know I still have my arm basically wrapped up and such. You know bandages. You know my left one not letting anyone know. So by my prosthetic arm. But technically speaking. I would basically just go to. Well. Basically the basement where Hestia and Bell are. Which I'm like, hi, hi, Belle. Hello, Hestia. Which, basically, Belle's like, so, how is everything with Hephaestus? I'm like, good. We have a guest, though. Which, she's like, huh? And then, basically, Edna shows herself, and she's like, hi. Which, basically, Hestia's like, ah! Well, if it miss, will miss help her. Which, she goes, goddess Hestia. You know, bows to her, and she goes, hello, Belle. He goes, uh, hi. So, basically, though, I just look at Hesse, I'm like, it's fine to get my status updated. <laughs> Let's see what I got. She goes, yep. I hope, I mean, she goes, she basically says a joke in tone. Who knows, maybe you basically leveled up. Me, just saying, I really hope I don't. I'd rather not level up, because uh, that's going to be a really pro of a problem lately. Which basically, I do know, would say, well, there have been quite a few people have been leveling up, basically recently. It keeps on increasing, which I'm like, well, increasing, which I'm like, true, but still, I'm just a rookie to everyone. So I'd rather basically level up basically at a different point in time. Which, basically, Hestia would, well, understand. And so, this is where it kind of gets a little bit broken. Dependent, okay, so basically, here's my strength stat. 600, my endurance stat, 750, dexterity, 600, wait, 760, agility, 780, magic, 710. Now, remember, I say the more determined I am, the bigger my boost of growth is, and the 
you know, when I die. So I died 15 times. So basically, it's kind of like this. Imagine, basically, I get, like, a 2 plus, basically, bonus to my stats when I first die. Basically, but I die, but the more deaths I have and the more determined I am, I get, basically, that 2 plus to become even bigger. So I die 15 times. Basically, my determination is very high at that point. So basically, it's 2, then it could be 7, or 2, and then it could be 10. So at this point, it's it will be the first time this ever happened. So it's 2, 8, 12, 16, 30, 57. So basically, that. So basically speaking, I would say this boost was approximately, basically, a 325 boost to my stats. So, but basically, adding on to this, and plus basically, when I kept on fighting, basically, agility, magic, and such, it, uh, my stats increased a lot. And, I mean, but that could have been, like, basically, probably, like, the 10th. Because, when I say I was, like, really determined, that could be, like, the 320 boost was probably at level 10. And then it could be, basically, like, 600 at the end. I, like, basically, my 15th attempt, like. So, it may, I'm trying to downgrade it a bit, but also trying to make it where it seems like it's fair. But, to be honest... It, the, with me dying 15 times, it, it's just, I might probably, I'm, all, I'm, based, I'm basically a triple S rank. At least in probably three or five, well, three or all stats. So, probably magic, probably double S, but, yeah. So, give me a minute, because I'm going to basically just, going to basically put what I think is basically suitable, all right? Okay, so I did my stats with the Machi, which basically Hestia is doing it. Bell is talking to Edna as basically Hestia basically is basically looking at the stats and while seeing them going up and up and up and up. As in her basically, you know, when it stops, she's like, uh, 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 what, uh, huh? This, this has never happened before. Which Belle and and are like, huh? Basically, I'm like Hestia. How fast did it go up? Which basically she's like, I'll show you. Which basically she goes, you also got two new skills. Hold up. Okay. Which I'm like, okay. So basically, though, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot. Basically, I would say in my head, Biru, you there? You see, Biru was like, hello, basically my liege. We used to be a little bit upset. I'm like, uh, Miru, what's wrong? I'm like, I thought I had more basically skills or magic. I'm only have heal. I'm like, uh, your stats? Oh, they're a lot lower, but due to the fact I'm level one and I did kill a couple of monsters, my, um, my basically strength is an A, which is 820. My basically other skill, I mean, my other stat, endurance, dex, and Jilly all S rank, which my endurance is 1,000, my dex is basically 1,420, my agility is 1,620, and my magic is a B, which is only 730. But still, I basically thought I was going to have other things, but I don't have many. Which I'm like, uh, uh, we're going to have to basically get you to become stronger. We're going to have to kill basically stronger monsters, which... Probably going to this basically the lower floors will actually be best. So we also basically have to try to find basically a, a good enough basically spell, or you need to gain one, or learn one basically that could be basically useful for like fireball or something. He goes, yes, my liege. As then basically I'm like, we'll talk later about this. All right, she would nod. And so, what happens is this. After basically, well, after basically that little discussion, we would then have basically, has to be like, okay, whatever you do, don't freak out, 
All right. Which, I'm like, okay, why are you saying like that? She goes, well, um, your growth. Here, as I just see basically my stats, and I'm like, okay, so my strength, dot, dot, dot. My endurance, no, dot, dot, dot. My dex and agility, dot, dot, dot. My magic, dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, and I just sigh. He go like, uh, why, why did this happen? Which basically, and is like, uh, um, guys, has to may I look at his stats? She goes, she just looks at her immediately. And goes like, if you do, you cannot say anything, or yell, or tell no one. Got it? She's like, uh, y- yes. Which. I gave her my paper, I'm, and Belle basically is also seeing it. She goes, strength, 3,045, what, 3,045 SSS? She basically double a double check, and then she goes, she looks at my endurance. 3,467, another triple S. Dex, 3,762, another triple S. Agility. 3,821 and another triple S and magic double S 2,993 almost become another triple she basically then see this I mean she then basically before she could look at the skills Bell just takes and he's like that, that's that's a certain amount of growth which I'm like yeah also basically I take the paper from Bell I'm like I got basically a healing skill called Heal Aura. Which basically has to go like, I think I heard this one. Basically, you can heal yourself and others around you. It's kind of like a, it can be an instant heal or basically a, well, or basically a slow heal that basically depends on how much ma- basically magic you use in it. Which I'm like, okay. And I basically just kind of chuckled. I'm like, but the last one was so offensive. Spell was kind of cool. She goes, "What spirit gun?" Basically, I'm like me, just holding up my fingertip. Basically, having some magic going into it. I'm like, spirit gun is a technique, basically where you actually shoot basically magic as a projectile. But she's like, ah, "That's actually really amazing." Bell's like, "That's so cool." Which and I was like, "Just, just how did you, how?" I'm like. I face against a level 15. She's, and you didn't level up? Which has to, I was like, no. Strange. Which I'm like, not really. I guess I, I guess we, just because I faced a level 15 monster, I didn't, well, the gods basically did not see fit to basically rank me up to level 2. Kind of a good thing, though. Which, basically, and I was like, I, I, I can't believe it. So, yeah, so basically Edna's talking basically about I can basically go to the lower floors now, but I can't go to the boss yet. Since I do have the stats, even though they're facing the monsters, I'm going to be facing level 2, which is the middle floors. Where she said I actually basically get some things, which I'm like, I have to go to the middle floors anyways because I need to um get a lot of, I'm only going probably up to like level, well, besides level 10 and 11. Maybe level 12 and 13 I'll go to, and if I think it's too dangerous, I'll basically make sure I get out of there. But she was good. So, in a sense, though, I look at Belle like, hey, isn't tomorrow the, when the Loki familia kind of basically goes on their, well, adventure down to, like, into the dungeon? Which Belle would nod. Which then I say to myself, well, not to say to myself, say in my head. And that means basically there's going to be a, well, the Minotaur. So I'm just basically, you know, we'll say to Bell, hey Bell, I think you should have like a status update soon, probably tomorrow. Before you go into the dungeon, after your little training session, which he would not be like, I will. So yeah, so Edna will leave, basically, we're just talking about it, and, well, basically that night, nothing really happens. Just, you know, the Minotaur is going to be happening, but I don't have enough time to do it. So, I'm going to have to end this soon, but I will say this. So, I would basically go and, well, basically 
kind of be checking up basically the armor and such I have on. I'm like, okay, should be able to handle the rest of the lower floor. Wait, not the lower floor. Yeah, some lower floors, probably 12 and 13, to be able to get back. I gotta be careful though, because the Minotaur will be there, probably, you know, on the higher floors. Uh, but, I mean, the, this Kaiden basically infused armor now should be actually able to be strong enough to handle most things. So, that's gonna be great though. Especially if that kind of changed basically Arturus's armor a bit. And, basically, I would take, you know, having the bag of the shards, I'm like, but I basically need to, well, infuse the, ar well, the rivers of blood into basically my katana. So, and I do have basically my other sword on my back. I never gave it a name. Maybe I should just name it Gerald? Hmm. For right now, that's basically what I'm probably going to call it. Basically, then I'm basically just like, actually, why not just call it after what, I mean, after the game? Witcher. Yeah. Basically, I will hold out basically the sword basically Gerald will have, and I'm like, for this fate fourth, I'm going to be your Witcher now. Which, basically, all of a sudden, basically the rune, like, not rune. Yeah, suddenly runes start to basically appear. I'm like, wait, what the? As in, basically, though, in the armory saying, basically, Unknown Blade, now it's called Witcher. And basically saying, by basically the work of basically the god Hephaestus, basically work on the blade, along with basically the we the current wielder named Sol, she has basically engraved some runes onto it, so when what, basically the name happens, the blade will grow not in strength, but will grow in a way basically that we very unique to it. Which I'm like, so it's not Bell's blade, but it's well Bell's knife, but it's different. Why did Festus do this? Did she add it on this when I uh when she heard I di I was nearly di dead? Which probably would make sense. So yeah. So in a sense, I will put it back in a sheaf and basically go into the dungeon. And, well, when I go, when I get to the 12th and 13th floor, when I go to the 12th floor, there's a lot of monsters, which I'm basically, well, kind, basically kind of again, it's like this weird feeling, and I basically just kind of basically start looking at basically the monsters, but I basically would just basically appear, and I'm like, come out, like, come on, you beast, let's see how you basically like to face someone that's going to be hunting you, as... I just take obviously the well the sword which are out and I just charge forwards towards them. As basically the monsters would run towards me. And yeah, cliffhanger. Cause I gotta go and make myself dinner, so I gotta get going. Hope you guys have a nice day, night, wherever you are, and this is gonna be coming out tonight. I'm gonna be trying to work on basically part seven. And then when I make and then um or I'm gonna be trying to work on basically a my, one of my Halloween what ifs I made back a long time ago. So, yeah. Hope you guys have a nice day, night, wherever you are. Bye, everyone.